Hey Priscilla, last week I learned that the only thing harder than trying to dress a squirmy four or five year old is trying to get Minkaye into a pair of boots. I know it's been two weeks since I've given a good update, so here's a quick recap. Last Wednesday we said goodbye to Minkaye's family as they headed back to Sapino. We will be joining them in a week or two to start building Minkaye's new house. Thursday, we put up a chain link fence up around Gallo's house and yard. Chain link is very typical around most homes in Shell. Gallo showed the guys how to weld while I picked up rocks around the yard and filled a ditch with them. I like to call that Minecraft Ecuador. The project took the whole day and a good bit of the evening, so after the last meter was welded, we all went for Chinese. Friday night, three of the guys from Young Life, Kevin, Pablo, and Jason, came over for dinner at iTech. We got to talk to them a lot about their lives and living with God as their center. We watched a short film starring Kevin on the internet, and then one of us learned why it is unwise to get their girlfriend's name tattooed on their body. On Saturday, we decided to help out at Gallo's house again. I played some more Ecuadorian Minecraft and then sat down for some tongue twisters. What is this? Say it again. <laughs> say it again, say it again. Clavito, clavon, clavito. Que clase de clavito? Clavon, clavon. Clavon, clavon, clavito. No, clavito, okay. Pablo? No. Pablito. Pablito, clavon, clavito. Que clase de clavon, clavon, clavito. Oh, I can do it. Very bien. Okay? Okay. After that, Galo, Andres, Libya, which is Galo and Andres' mom, Boyce, Camden, and I drove to Mera and went swimming in the one unpolluted river in our part of Pazasta. The water was cold, but exceptionally clear compared to the rivers in Shell. In fact, late Sunday afternoon, we did get to compare rivers. Pablo, Kevin, and Jason asked my comrades and I to come with them to the river. It was an exceedingly wet day, and we didn't leave till five trying to wait out the weather. By the time we got there, we only had about an hour left of sunshine. Kevin had already been waiting for us down by the river, but we decided to go further upstream, where the natural surroundings of the river help us forget the number of bacteria swirling in the murk. I jumped off a small cliff into the icy cold water, with giant leaves tickling my feet at the bottom. Ugh. There was even a short rope swing that the guys took turns on. I got cold fast, so I didn't stay in very long. Oh, and something I forgot to mention. Friday morning, we went to the old folks' daycare in the morning to do physical therapy. I call this daycare because unlike North American nursing homes, it literally is a place where seniors in the community come for a few hours in the morning to late afternoon to socialize, create, and now, since we're here, exercise. We've been going a few mornings for about two weeks. This Friday morning, however, was a little bit different. One of the more spry gentlemen invited Boyce, Camden, and I over to his house to see his fruit trees. We didn't know until later that he actually had invited us over to climb his fruit trees and see if there was any ripening. <laughs> After 20 minutes of searching, we found a rickety wood ladder. Boyce volunteered to climb up the skinny trunk of the tree that the old fellow had indicated to us. After a few precarious minutes of searching, Boyce knocked down a hard, green seed pod. The elderly gentleman grinned with his few teeth and then gave us some really, really ripe bananas. Though we were late starting exercises, I think there was no better use of our time than to make that old man smile. This week, we will be working as hard as we can to make Gallo's house livable before Saturday. The reason why Gallo is so jazzed to have the house finished by then is because it will be Misael's first birthday party, and Misael's the man. Priscilla, I'll be updating on Sunday, I promise. <laughs>